what is going on everyone so uh like i said in the last video um i was gonna look into removing the uh secondary air injection uh system that i guess it's called like the smog pump is another name for it that's under the passenger side fender well um so i'm gonna look into getting that out of there today I, i've been doing hours and hours of research online and i couldn't really find a how-to um, guys just say it's really easy remove vacuum lines but you don't want to remove the wrong vacuum lines um, because some some of them need to stay and I plan on keeping the EGR until I can get a tuner and until I get the full exhaust system and then I'm just gonna get the car tuned all at once after I remove that stuff so um, all I'm doing today is just removing the smog pump which is not needed um, it will throw a check engine light, but it's not going to mess with how the car runs. All the smog pump is for is really just, um, it's for the cats. And uh, this car doesn't have catalytic converters, so um, I'm not too worried about it. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Try to post a video here and there um, on how to do this. So it'll kind of be like a how-to video. Um, but I don't really like doing those because once I start working, I don't like interrupting myself to do videos so um yeah just uh kind of follow along Hope, hopefully this helps some guys all right guys so the first thing i am uh removing is i don't know if you can see it right here this is according to my notes the secondary air injection bypass valve um so i've got actually i found this little diagram like vacuum line diagram here um on classictiger.com um i don't know if it'll focus for me or not but basically shows the vacuum line diagram um this here all these four of these things here um all have to do with the the air pump the smog pump the secondary air injection whatever you want to call it so the first thing i'm removing I just found what I thought was easiest to start with is the secondary air injection bypass valve, which is this one right here. Um, so once I unbolt that, I'll just kind of keep filming whatever I, else I take off to kind of help you guys, whoever's wanting to remove this. All right, guys, so I've got the uh, air injection bypass unbolted, which you can see right here, um, two eight millimeter bolts. And then there's another one. Let's see if I can focus on it here. Like right there um, I don't know what size it was mine was loose so I just undid it by hand um, and I didn't take the time to check to see what size it was but that's the other thing for this this whole bracket here that'll come off but basically the, the bypass valve right now is suspended um, via the line that goes to the um, exhaust manifold and then the line that goes right here to the other pump um, so it kind of tees off here. This goes to the pump. This goes to the other valve, the uh, air or well, the air injection diverter, which is this whole piece right here, which I'm going to be removing as well. So I just wanted to give a quick update on that. All right, I am now removing the diverter valve. Uh, same situation to. All right, so I'm now removing removing the uh, diverter valve, uh, which is right here. Same situation to eight millimeter bolts um, and you can kind of see here the line that and I unhooked that clamp the line vacuum line that runs tees right there goes down and under to the pump that's in the fender well over there other part goes to the bypass valve which I've already disconnected um, there was a vacuum line on top of that which is right here um, follow that all the way around there's another one right here which will disconnect as well and get that out of there and then this one not sure where that one goes but we'll figure that out as we go i'm cutting that's really what i'm doing i'm just kind of figuring this out as i go because like i said there's no video online of how to do this so all right so we got the car jacked up i did loosen the wheel just in case i had to take it off but looks like i might not have to um i got quite a bit of space here so um <clears throat> just unscrewed and un um, I guess just unscrewed this uh, fender liner and then we got the pump right there on the inside of the fender 
looks like just those two bolts there holding on there might be another one uh, I'm not really sure yet but there's the vacuum line coming from the other two valves um, so this is a, it's a lot of crap in here um, so I'm sure it's gonna give me some weight savings as well so I'll get that out of there all right so there was one more bolt on the bracket that holds the whole pump and uh, it was right there kind of zooming in on it right there um, and all three bolts uh, 10 millimeter uh, just so you guys are aware all right so the third uh, bolt holding the whole pump on which is uh, let's see if you see my finger here that one right there I had to cut it off cut the bracket off because I couldn't get the uh, the bolt out it's a pretty tight space and I didn't feel like taking the bumper and stuff off to get a better angle at it but it just kept spinning so um, wouldn't come out so I ended up just getting an angle grinder out cutting it out and this is what we're left it with right here this is the whole pump assembly um, there were two um, wiring harnesses hooked up this is one and here I'll show you here these two are the things that were plugged into it so make sure you unhook those before you um, take the pump off and I'll have to tuck those up somewhere and figure out where I'm gonna put those but now all that's left is to just unhook this hose here and then I gotta take the uh, part that connects to the exhaust manifold off all right third one so I got the pump out of there out of the fender well um, the smog pump got the both the bypass or well the bypass and the diverter valves out um, so you can kind of see how it's a little bit cleaner. I got to get, still got to get the, that bracket right there out. Um, but overall, I mean, it gave it a, definitely gave it a cleaner look, but it was not easy. Um, so I ended up taking the intake out so that I could get to the, um, where the, um, I guess, vacuum hooks up to the exhaust manifold here. Kind of hard to see. I don't know if my lighting will let me brighten it up a little bit. So you can see there's like a couple nuts right there. Could not break those for the life of me. I've been spraying it for a couple hours now with liquid wrench and WD-40. Couldn't get them loose. So what I ended up doing is taking a grinding wheel, cutting the vacuum line, and I'm just going to have to fill that with like a JB Weld or something or, or uh, smash it closed and then JB Weld it a little bit um, just to get that you know sealed up there so exhaust gases aren't leaking out so it was not easy just because of i think the age of the the, the car and everything's just kind of rusted shut had to get the grinding wheel out for uh quite a bit of stuff ended up doing the same thing over here wasn't even gonna mess with trying to get the, the nut loose um as you can see like right down here right there where my finger's pointing Cut the uh, vacuum line right there. Got everything removed. Um, so you can see that's all the, the smog stuff. So these are the, it's like the diverter and bypass valves, vacuum lines. Um, here's the pump that was in the fender well. A um, couple brackets that weren't needed anymore. Um, all in all, I mean, I don't know, I'd say this might be seven to 10 pounds of stuff, but it, the, the main reason I did it was to get a cleaner look in the engine bay and also just because I'm trying to get rid of everything I don't need. I'm, I'm a bit of a minimalist, so getting rid of stuff I don't need is like, gives me joy, I guess you could say. Um, you gotta get that one last bolt off there over that bracket, but um, anyways, yeah, it's, that's pretty much it. Um, what I'm gonna have to do is bend that vacuum line shut as well and then i'm just gonna honestly just leave it like it is until i get some headers um gonna save up for the cook's long tubes cook's uh x pipe with no cats and then might do like flow master exhaust um i don't know if i'm gonna do the cat back or the dumps kind of looking at the dumps right now so um give it a cleaner look out back but anyways, that's pretty much it for the, the smog pump stuff. Um, I'm going to have to cap, cap these vacuum lines off. There's two of them. 
Um, and then once I do the EGR delete, I'll be able to get rid of a lot more stuff too, like this whole crap over here. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, everyone, one last thing. So the um, two uh, plastic like vacuum lines that I removed from the uh, two, the diverter valve and the uh, the other pump, I forget what the name of it was. Anyways, this, these two, these two little pump things. Um, so I, the two vacuum lines that I rem removed from those, um, I didn't really want to go out because of the whole virus thing um, and I didn't have any caps so what I did was I just I cut them a little short and then used a heat gun and get, basically heated it until it was at a melting point and then I smashed it together with some pliers um, just to kind of seal it off did the same with this line here um, so as you can see there's no no hole anymore no opening it's all sealed up um, just to kind of you know cap those get those out of the way because um, there are other vacuum lines that are still being used with the EGR um, because like I said before I didn't I'm not removing the EGR right now just because I'd, I'd like to get it tuned and get a full exhaust and a tuner before I do all that stuff so I still have some things I need to purchase but anyways I just wanted to show you guys that and then like I mentioned just a, a little bit ago is what I'm going to do with the little vacuum lines here is hopefully get some JB Weld and uh, just kind of try to maybe smash that pipe in a little bit and close it up a little and then get some JB Weld on it just to, so the exhaust isn't leaking out right there. Um, but yeah, I mean that's pretty much it so far. And like I said, I mean it's it was kind of a ghetto operation the way I cut cut these these uh, vacuum lines and did everything but it's just a temporary thing until I get the cooks headers and uh, then I'll be able to get all that stuff out of there and get the full exhaust and the tuner and be able to get rid of the EGR and get everything tuned so that I can drive it and not have any issues um, and get this uh, check engine lights taken off and everything else like that so um, just a you know Sunday project board thought I'd film a little bit of it just so that you guys get an idea of what's involved in, as far as taking the small pump off. All right guys, so I keep thinking I'm gonna end this video, but I just kind of keep adding to it. Um, but anyways, today I uh, went to Advanced Auto and I got um, some of this quick steel, thermo steel, high temperature metal repair. Um, basically like JB Weld, except this stuff withstands 2400 degrees. It can withstand basically an open flame. Um, and I plan to kind of mix some of that stuff up and then fill in the, let's get a better picture here. Basically fill in this little hole where the old vacuum line was that I cut off. Um, and like I said a couple of times already, guys, I didn't, this wasn't the best uh, removal of this, the air injection pump and everything. Um, I couldn't get those two nuts off or the nut off there um it's the car is just so old it was stuck on there and i didn't feel like messing with it so i just cut the vacuum line i plan to replace the exhaust manifolds with uh, some cook's long tubes anyways so um just going to be a temporary fix this is um but just going to try to fill in the that vacuum tube there and then same with the one down in there it's kind of hard to see but um gonna see how this stuff works all right guys so as you can see focus there a little bit i got that uh stuff all over there it doesn't look pretty but i don't really care right now um so hopefully that dries up what i did was i put a screw on the end um to kind of cap it uh, and the screw fit perfectly in there and then i just put that uh weld stuff all over the top of the screw and on the inside of it and all around it put two coats on it so i put one coat on it waited for it to dry and then put another coat on it did the same for that one down there Let's see if i can zoom in or something there yeah there we go did the same for that one put a screw in there um you know focus and uh 
I put that stuff around there, put two coats on there. So hopefully that holds up. If it doesn't, I'll uh, post in the, dis or I'll update the description of this video and say, don't do this, it doesn't work. <laughs> All right, but uh, we'll see you next time, guys, on the next video. I've um, got some cool stuff planned. I got uh, some stuff to take off the uh, uh, sound deadening, deadening material off the inside of the car. So stay tuned.